Hello, I'm Peter Christensen. I'm the Episcopal Advisor for Sarah USA. Um, I am the Bishop of Superior, Wisconsin, and I'm pleased to be here today to talk about some exciting uh, developments for Sarah as we look to the future, and uh, grateful for Sarah as we appreciate the current and past goodness that they have performed for so many uh, thousands of uh, vocations. The church is, is strengthened by the commitment that Sarans make to the church universal. I um, uh, experienced firsthand the power of Sarah when I was a seminarian 34 years ago. Um, I was asked to be the one who communicates uh, Sarah activities to the seminarians and also report back to the Sarah clubs as well, what seminary's life is like. And um, at that point in my life, I realized that this is a powerful uh, organization of men and women who really do put their money where their mouth is. They, they practice what they preach, as you know. You get involved with vocations in a way that uh, helps us all be affirmed in the goodness of God's calling in our lives, and for that, I'll be forever grateful. Uh, many of my friends have been affected in positive ways by the goodness of Sarah, and uh, again, I'm thrilled to be able to speak to you today and to uh, enjoy, again, a time to appreciate the different ministries and opportunities that Sarah is offering us. And as we enjoy this opportunity to see the good work of Sarah, I'd like to begin by introducing to you the, uh, the current president of Sarah USA, uh, Greg Lynch. I'm really honored and excited to be your president at this time, especially as we move forward to the 300th anniversary of Blessed Junipero Serra uh, next year in 2013. We have a lot of exciting activities planned, and it's a time for all Serrans to come together as one and to re rededicate ourselves and unite as we go forward. And I want to again thank Bishop Peter for being here with us today and helping us do this. Thank you very much. Uh, the mission of uh, Serra is to promote vocations to the priesthood and religious life. Number two is to affirm the vocations of the priesthood and religious life now and to improve the spirituality of member. It's very important all our activities of the clubs that they do and all the different things they do throughout the year to support this and help our priests in this time as we go forward. And during the last few years we've sort of lost track of the mission of Sarah a little bit and we want to move forward and do more positive things and more effective things for our mission in the, the U.S. We want to strengthen the clubs and be, be more effective in the organization of uh, the U USA organization. It's really rewarding to see the activities of all the clubs in the U.S. and all the wonderful things they do for Sarah. And we want them to continue to do that and grow in the future. And it's our aim and objective to cause things to happen to do that. We want to see, and overall, we want to see a stronger Sarah internationally. Good. Thank you, Greg, and for that presentation. And now we introduce uh, Dan Jones, who is president-elect. And he'll be speaking about how we move now forward in the future of Sarah. You know, it's an exciting time for our church, it's an exciting time for Sarah, and it's an exciting time with this new organization as the direction we're going. We're an organization that's been in existence for about 63 years. We do a lot of good things with our priests and our bishops, but we'd like to uh, evaluate those things and do the things that we're doing well still, and then find things that we're not doing as well or could do better and, and uh, make, it, make it a stronger organization. And we feel one of the ways that we could do that is to uh, uh, reduce the size of our board. We're, our board is about 22 people. Uh, 14 of them are from uh, the 14 regions in the United States based on the United States Council of Bishops. And we want to reduce that down to seven, have seven regions, and then our, our usual officers of president, president-elect, secretary, uh, that kind of thing. So this will allow us to be more efficient by changing our governments, uh, the name of our government people from district governor to diocese coordinator, we feel that's one of the ways we can do this. And then emphasize in each of our dioceses what our, what our bishops want. Well, we want to develop a, a fund development arm of our organization. And the reason for this is probably twofold. Number one is uh, when Sarah first started many years ago, they were well-to-do people, they, they had money to spend. But if we look at our Sarah membership today, a lot of people are, are really want to help in promoting vocations of priesthood and religious life, but they're not necessarily wealthy people. And then also, secondly, to do programs, if we want to spend pro money on a program that, that hasn't been in existence, uh, we can do that. So again, lots of good programs out there, just we need to find out 
what programs our bishops want, what, what their needs are, and then to follow through in helping uh, our Sarah Club or our, our uh, club or Sarah Club member, uh, you know, work on um, producing those programs. So, yeah, I think one of the reasons we're doing all this is we want to refocus back on our mission. You know, we, we sometimes you spend too much time in detail and detail and things you're trying to do, and we need to get back and really realize that our mission is to promote and uh, affirm vocations to priesthood and religious life. And so I, th I think we need to b look at how we can be more efficient, how we can be more effective. You know, do we still send out magazines? Yes, maybe, uh, with some of our older sirens. But we also need to look at uh, social media as other means of communication, that life is changing in the world. And so we need to look at other ways that we can communicate with our membership. And uh, it's, it's a good example of that is a social media event I went to a, a few months ago. And uh, the vocation director at Notre Dame said, I don't really want to get on Facebook. I don't want to do Twitter. But I want to talk to those young men about being priests, in his case, the Holy Cross. So he said, I get involved with the social media because I want to be able to talk to these men one on one and be able to talk to them about potentially being a priest. We need to look at how we can be more efficient and more effective. What, how can we uh, take our time, our talent, and our treasure and make it more effective? It's always something we need to be looking at. And that's why this, uh, these new things in this uh, organization are, are really exciting to me and to other people as well. We're all Sarens because we love our priests, we love the Eucharist. Many Sarens go to Mass on a daily basis, they pray the Rosary frequently, and so we, we're excited about the future because we want our children and grandchildren and future generations to have young men and women who serve our church like past generations have. Yeah, thank you, Dan, uh, for that update, and again, very hopeful. Uh, getting with the times, learning the uh, key uh, components which makes up society today and make sure that Sarah is is moving forward in a way that is current especially with our young uh, very important so thank you and now we're going to hear a word from Judy Cousins who as many of you know has been working with the college connection for the past five years as Sarah has taken that on board as their responsibility in part to make sure that that uh, care for our young in college systems is is being met especially in their Catholic identity and Judy will say a few words about that and also about the advancement of using the Newman connection uh, as a merge will take place will even enhance more the college connection. Uh, it's very hopeful and Judy will, now will say a few words about that. Over 50,000 students will come to this campus this fall and about 25% of them will be Catholic. So that averages about 12,500 Catholics on campus. And if we do nothing to connect those kids to their faith, about 15% of them will locate the Catholic campus ministry. So let's think about that. Of that 12,500, we maybe have about 1,800 that are gonna find the campus ministry. And that's alarming to me. College Connection for Catholics was set out to change that statistic. It's important because in college years, so many people discern their vocation in life. They decide what they're going to do. And Newman Connection has decided that we are a good resource too, and they have joined with us. So College Connection and Newman Connection are now working together to impact Catholic campus ministry on the campuses. We know from statistics from the CARA report that young people that take part in Catholic campus ministry are more likely to attend mass when they get out of college. They are more likely to be leaders in our parishes and more likely to consider a religious vocation. Newman Connection is a program that's trying to improve campus ministries. And in trying to improve them, they are providing free resources for them. You know, if we look at our campus ministry programs, they have a very limited budget, very small staffs, and they need help. So for example, the Newman Connection on their beautiful website, newmanconnection.com, has put out a course for the UCAT. And that course is broken up into different segments and it allows you as a campus minister to use one part of it and then to have the discussion questions right afterwards. It's just beautiful. Now, with the help of our United States Office of 
you know, for vocations, we have started something bigger and we have grown. We're now a national organization serving thousands of kids and we have 1,800 colleges on our website. How do we do that? We get the name of a kid who's going to college, his address and where he's going. We, can, we send that kid a very beautiful letter that shows them about the campus ministry on their campus. And it tells them about mass times and events and places they can go to connect with the, their Catholic faith. And then um, the campus minister is also given their contact information because we know young people, when they get to college, they're not really too interested in finding the Catholic campus ministry. But if somebody comes by their dorm door on Sunday night and knocks on the door and says, hey, come on to Mass, we're going to have pizza afterwards, they may come. That is what we're doing, is we're connecting those kids to the campus ministry. Campus ministry is where the action is taking place. And that's one of the things I want to encourage you to think about. We have so many beautiful vocation programs in our clubs and with our members, and each one of them is important. But I hope a lot of you will consider this important too, because this is where they're making that decision about what they're going to do with their life. This is where they might be meeting their mate, and we hope it's a Catholic one, and that they'll attend church and fill the pews in the future in our churches too. Oh, I wanted to share with you about some of the successes of our program. KU in Lawrence, Kansas has a Catholic center called the St. Lawrence Center, and they have had 40 young people from that center answer the call and are presently serving in religious vocations, and they have 16 more in formation, and I know there'll be many more to come. Next year, we're sending them over 300 names, but the year after that, we hope it will be 3,000. Texas A&M has 127 Aggie religious vocations out there serving our church. And they have 43 right now in formation. 43 people in formation for religious vocations. St. Mary's in Winona has one or two men going to the seminary every year. So this kind of work is so terribly important, is to increase the quality of the instruction they receive in that campus ministry and increase the number attending. You wonder sometimes what you can do because some of you have had children that have lost their faith in college, or maybe it was grandchildren. Well, I tell you what you can do. You can get out and support us. You can get out and support vocation work because then maybe there'll be a priest or a sister there to bring one of your beloved family members back to the faith. And with the help of the Sarah Clubs across the United States and all the members who have worked on this program, we are growing. And Judy, thank you. Uh, very articulate and uh, very uh, exciting as we look to our college campuses and making sure that uh, our young are well taken care of and that they advance in the church as adults who are committed to their faith. And uh, as you said towards the end, uh, the improvement with uh, the opportunity for vocations to religious life and priesthood will certainly be part of the, the gift that will flow from this new connection with the Newman Centers. So thank you. One uh, personal caveat I'd like to add to that is something that I think is going to be a great need in the future, and that will be for our priests especially to be encouraged by you as individuals and by you as clubs and by a council, uh, the Council of the United States in, uh, in its entirety, because our church is going through some difficult times in part, and uh, again, the priests are going to need words of affirmation, words of encouragement, letting them know that you stand with them as we move forward to be a bright light, a shining light to the communities in which we serve. I would put a, a special note of uh, keeping tied to the mission, uh, review the mission statements of, of the Sarah, uh, your own mission statement, and, and, and be well versed in the commitment you make to that mission statement because from that will flow uh, marvelous gifts for our future as we move forward. Again, I want to thank you, all of you, who have given your lives, your time, to make sure our vocations in this country are strong. Um, God bless you.